Yeah. Well, Dermot, welcome. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, Cheers. Thanks Great to be in, guys. Thanks very much. Yeah, so first of all, tell us about the video. And I'm sorry, you probably feel a little bit underdressed because yeah. we're wearing our Christmas jumper. Oh, we'll, we'll throw some glitter on you later. We yeah. debated yeah. about bringing the glitter in. The other we way. might <laughs> do. Oh, we yeah, might have brought it to colour my eyes. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, so tell us about the video. Um, Eamon came to me just before, Eamon from World Sports Team came to me in 2010 about it and he was wanting me to get involved in the charity. I said that I was heading off travelling and we said well it'd be, it'd be fun to try something out that I would have when we came back and tried a couple of things in New York and then in LA on a camera that I lost so I lost the video no! from LA and uh, when I kind of put so you have to go back, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm putting, putting it off for, uh, for number two. Yeah. Once I get a, a benefactor who's going to just launch in some money, I'll, I'll make number two, you know. Of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, once I, once I put it together four or five different places, it began to kind of take a bit of shape, and I said, yeah, I'd do it everywhere. And everybody so, started getting involved. So how did you get onto the likes of Ryan O'Driscoll and then get them all in? Uh, true, d just diff different avenues. I mean, yeah, yeah the world of Irish sport is, is, is pretty small in many ways, so I could call up most of them, send them a text and give them a call and just mm -hmm. ask them to get involved. And, once I saw the video having reached back to Ireland, I suppose, which was all the foreign ones, yeah. they were they were kind of moved by it a little bit and they wanted to get involved. And I think it tells a bit about the organisation as well and what it does. Sports Tower, our world sports team, the idea is, just, I guess, to be an online hub to raise funds for athletes with catastrophic injuries. Mm -hmm. And so if there is a heavy injury somebody, somebody um, takes, playing rugby, for example, maybe a second string, um, lower level or whatever, it can, it can be any level. Yeah. Um, there's a platform online to, to to raise funds for you know, you know the, the, the stricken athlete yeah. and mm -hmm. I guess anybody who supports that type of that sport whatever that is they come together and mm -hmm. they drive it on I so, suppose uh, yeah that's the thing you kind of don't think like say if somebody is injured and they can't play this the sport that they love mm -hmm. it really does affect somebody like particularly like their mental health so it's, it's really important to like think about that kind of stuff isn't yeah, it yeah yeah it's it only ever you only ever think about it when it happens yeah. for people looking in but an athlete's always very keenly aware of the fact that it can, it can, not that it can end, you're not ever thinking it can just end, but you're always thinking injury is kind of an integral part of it. So Absolutely. when that goes wrong, yeah, it's not good. So this is people coming in behind you to pick it all up together, you know. Amazing. And you went from everywhere from New York to Tibet, so many different places around there where everybody's like, what is that stick? Yeah, what that, is but that, that, was, thing? that was the best part of it, realistically, like, you know, because they were actually coming over and, they, you know, obviously in America they're definitely going to do it because yeah. there's some quizzes about everything. Yeah. You, you know, they come up and they ask you, <laughs> you know, they are, well, they are, like, you know, they, they're not afraid to ask yeah. an Irish person to be like, oh yeah, I don't know, better not, better not ask him what's going <laughs> yeah. on, but American go, what the hell is that? Yeah. So that's what they did, and they were coming up, and so you get a chance to chat, chat about hurling, mm. and that happened everywhere. So in, in Kathmandu, in Nepal, a few people came up and said, oh, what's this? And we got chatting to mm. them, ended up staying in their house for about three days, oh, you know, staying good. with their family. So it was that's a great brilliant. way, when you're traveling, it's yeah. a great way mm -hmm. to not be in the travel hotspots. You're yeah. in the local places with local people, and that was the kind of trip we were after. And you're also involved in another amazing uh, organization, SOAR, with um, another hurler, Tony Griffin. So tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's based on, on the phenomenal work of Jim Steins in, in Australia. Um, Tony Griffin and Carl Swan set it up about three years ago, and so we've just come on stream as a youth facilitators. We go out, run workshops with kids around the country, in school, out of school, mainly 15, 16 year olds, and we literally go in and create a safe space for them to actually get the stuff that's going on for them, the real stuff, give value to the absolute inherent wisdom that's in 15, 16 year olds, which, you know, as adults we tend mm. to think, oh, you should do this and you should do that. Yeah. Because, you know, I was 15 once and that's what I should have done. But that's not the case. If You, you have to value what they've experienced and Absolutely. value exactly. that. And for any more information is. on that, people can check out our Twitter. We'll put all the links up to it and we'll put the link up to uh, the video as well. Thank you so much Thank for coming. Thank you so much. Sorry, yeah. we didn't have uh, much more time. But um, guys, stick around because we're going to be talking to Professor Green right after this. Thank you so much for Thanks, coming man. in. Cheers. 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 Thanks.